Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Well, as promised, I have a couple things I wanted to show you from an earlier video. Um, the mailbag video, which I showed these coming in and with some other things. But we'll go through them all one by one here and show you what the three pieces were that I got from the New York platform seller. I'll have a link in the description of all three items uh, as well as their storefront. But you can get most of these items from pretty much most um, of these electronics sellers on eBay. Uh, you can actually get them direct from China if you'd like and get them much cheaper than I did. Uh, I decided to get them from a distributor in the States because I've had bad luck with stuff from China sometimes not actually showing up. So alas, these came directly from the States here even though they are Chinese made. made. Now you see in the distance here, I have some wires going off to the from a power supply and behind the monitor over here. And I also have this extension cord, actually just a short cord, but I just wanted to keep everything in frame. This is actually a charger for my Samsung uh, tablet over here. And uh, we have these three pieces here. So let's get started with the first one. Now I'll show you the specs here. The first item here is a DC to DC step down buck converter. It's 6.5 to 40 volt DC input, and it gives you a 5 volt, uh, 2 amp fixed output. This has an overcurrent, over temperature protection. It is also uh, has a built-in reverse polarity. Its ultra low power mode is basically uh, off switch to shut the entire unit off. The USB does have a output switch of its own, so you can just shut that off if you'd like. And well, I'll show you what this looks like. I've already soldered, or not actually soldered, just connected two wires on it. And by the way, I like the packaging. They give you this nice anti-static bag with the pink static-free you know, bubble wrap inside of it. When we open this up here, you'll see it's a really basic unit. You just get this three-digit display. There's the input terminal over here, the USB output over here, and then you got two buttons, one for low power mode on top, and then the one on the bottom here is the actual USB output toggle. There's also a red LED that will light up when this is activated. And like I said, I just, you know, just hook these up in here to, for now to show you what this looks like. Now there is two pads right here. You can actually see the holes, the light coming through those holes. Those are solder points. Um, 5 volt outputs so the top is 5 volt positive the bottom is the ground so if you wanted to you can actually embed this into a project and then have this be a you know separate output um, it does also look like if you wanted to the switches here could be soldered onto so you can actually bring this out too if you'd like I'm going to keep this as is of this little board. This is going to be for experimenting and, you know, it wasn't a lot of money. Again, I'll put the links and the prices down in the description. I don't remember them off head. Um, over here, I have a 12 volt signal. So I'm going to connect this up and we'll see indeed. This tells you that it's 12.1 volts. Let's see if I show the light a little bit. And. I did check this. This is exactly a 5-volt output. In fact, I'll leave that here to the distance, and we'll see. But the next item, the Charger Doctor. This is a USB voltage current meter. You can test 3.5 to 7.0 volts in a range of 0 to 3 amps. So if I show you that one, that's this guy here. And this one's nice because it's got this plastic case. And this one's simple. I mean, really, you just plug it directly in. And this one's going to light up here in a second. Oh, right, i got to turn this output on. So you push the switch, the output comes on, and it tells you it's 5.05 volts. And if this goes a second, you'll actually see the amperage come up. Now, it's not obviously plugged in anything else, so it's not going to draw any amperage. But if I want, I can actually take my tablet off to the side here plug this into the charger port and I think this has it's definitely not a full battery so the charger is definitely going to kick in let's see I 
can see we're getting pretty close to exactly 5 volts. 1, one amp. Yep, it's running at 1 amp. And if I check my screen, the battery is indeed charging. Now, I do know that this will actually draw more power than that. We might we might see when we plug it into the actual charger. Now, this is rated 5 volt 2 amp. The actual Samsung charger, if I can read it, is also rated for 2 amp. Now, I know some devices are rated at 2.1 amps. I think a lot of uh, Apple devices are. So, we'll, I'm not sure if we'll charge them or not, but... If I unplug this, we're actually going to unplug the whole charger doctor. Let me shut the output off. I'll disconnect this, and we'll plug it in over here. Now this one's putting out 5.7 volts, much higher. And then uh, on the amperage, let's see if it's drawing more. Yeah, see it's drawing 1.6 amps out of this charger. So this is actually a really handy tool. You can use this to test a variety of different things. A lot of people use these for the uh, USB power banks to see how much power you know they're pulling out of those things, which is really handy too. So those are two um, handy devices. The third one is, again, right in line with these. This is probably the most simplest out of all of them. This is a tiny little DC voltmeter. This is actually a really neat device. This one is actually yellow. Uh, let's see, where's the spec sheet on this? You got 3.5 to 30 volt input. This is the two wire hookup, meaning that the wires you hook this up to will be the power source for the actual meter itself. Some of the meters have three wires, which means you have to have its own power source. Now that's useful for certain situations. This one's useful for others. Your application will be, you know, depending on, on you, basically. But I have this one, again, for experimenting, but ultimately it's going to end up in another project, which I'll show you briefly at the end of this. But we can see here, it's, it also has the um, reverse polarity protection. Um, the switched output LED indicator, sorry, that would, that belonged with up top. I did copy and paste some of these. Uh, yeah, it is less than 8 milliamp uh, output current. Uh, and uh, yeah, the refresh rate's pretty fast in this. Yeah, it doesn't have a low power mode, and you can scratch those off the list. In fact, just crumple that up right there. Tried to make the specs easy, but I'll put them in the description as well. But anyway, here's the little guy. Now I do have a three volt, uh, three point three volt supply right here. That this actually does read pretty nicely. Make sure we get this here. You can see this one's reading 3.4 volts. I shut this big light off. You can see that easier. These guys come in a variety of different colors, too. There's the 5 volt. And I see there is a bit of a delay. Oops. It's not instantaneous. Let me take this off of here. Now what is curious to see is when you read a signal that's got a two digit front number here, as in 12 volt, you'll see it shifts the decimal placeover since it's only a three digit display. So you actually lose a number in resolution here, which is, you know, it is what it is. I I'm actually have to hook up my meter um, and actually see how close this is to being accurate. You know, it does have an accuracy range like most meters do. I'm pretty sure it's, you know, close. It's going to be close enough for what I'm going to do, which I'll show you right now. And here's the front of a power supply I'm working on. And what I'm planning on doing is, since this is so small, is I'm going to mount this on the inside with just a little window sticking out above each of the outputs. So there's going to be the 3.3 here. The 5 volt here, the 12 volt here, and this last one's negative 12 volt. It won't get, it won't get one. It doesn't really need one. Um, originally, I thought this was a little bigger, so I was going to put one up on top here with a selector knob, like a four-pin selector switch, that would select between the different inputs and maybe have like you know three, and then the fourth one would be 
an actual set of terminals for you know probes on their own but this thing's tiny it's going to fit right above these really nicely and I can actually just shorten these wires and connect it right to the backs of the terminals of, for these uh, jacks here so that's going to work very nicely well, well that's the end of this video thanks for watching and stay tuned for more